Shooting film while traveling may seem simple, but there are some small things that you need to take care of that can take your pictures from this to this. I've put together this ultimate guide to traveling on film so you don't come back from a boozy break in Berlin or a feisty fortnight in Florence with shit photos. I'm not gonna waste any more of your time. I'm gonna hit you with some really easy tips so you can nail your next trip. First off, what's a workman without any tools? You're gonna need the right camera and the right lens for the job. I'm just gonna give you two options just to keep things simple. If you just wanna shoot quick shots of your friends slamming tequilas, then you want a point and shoot. Now, the Olympus Mu 2 is hailed as the king of point and shoots, but for basically half the price, you can get the Olympus Mu 1. You'll basically be able to get all the same kinds of shots, but you'll be saving 100 pounds, which you can put to the side for, you know, getting your ass tattooed or whatever. If you actually wanted to get good photos and you're getting a little bit serious with it, then you might want to get yourself an SLR camera. Now, I know everyone goes on about the Canon AE-1, which is fine-ish, but personally, I'd suggest the Pentax K1000 because it's a tank and I love it. And the lenses that come with the K1000 can be really good. If I was gonna suggest one lens that you had to take with you for traveling, then I'd probably suggest a 35 millimeter prime lens. Usually these will come at F 3.5 or F 2.8 or something like that. Both of those are absolutely fine. With a 35 millimeter focal length, it's moderately wide, but not crazily wide. You'll be able to get pictures of your friends. You'll be able to get pictures of a mountain range. You'll be able to get pictures of whatever you want while you're out there. Of course, there are so many cameras that you could possibly use, but I'm not here to complicate things. Once you've got your camera, then you're gonna to wanna to put something in it. No, not that. You're gonna need some film. And once I've covered this, I'm gonna to get to some real secret sauce later on. If you're on a budget like most of us surfs, then you're probably gonna want some Kodak Gold 200 or something like that. It's cheap, it's punchy, it's okay. Some people actually really like Kodak Gold. I'm not one of them, but if you're on a budget, it's just fine. The pictures you take are a million times more important than the kind of film that you take them on. Now, if you're out there trying to get the best possible pictures that you can, and you've got some money from when your dad sold the second home in Spain, then you can go for Kodak Portra 400. Portra 400 is really versatile, it's got a great dynamic range, and it's got pretty perfect skin tones. There we go, nice and simple. Shoot what you want. I'm not gonna list all 176 film stocks, but these are my quick fire options. Believe it or not, when you're flying with film, you need to be extra careful because airport scanners can mess up your ship. There's a lot of conflicting information on this one and a lot of it's anecdotal. Some people say that they've been on flights and everything's been fine. Some people say that they've been on flights and all their films have been destroyed. Basically, the scanners produce sort of radiation and that can affect the color film or whatever film you've got. The lower the sensitivity of your film, then the less it will affect it. So if you are going through with some Ektar 100 film, then chances are it'll probably be fine. If you're going through with some Portra 800, then it could be damaged. My best advice is to either buy film at your destination and maybe send it to a lab that's in that location, or you can ask to get it hand inspected, which may or may not work when you get to the airport. Sometimes they'll do it, sometimes they'll just say, your film's gonna be fine. I've been through a bunch of times and I've had absolutely no issues, but I know that all of the scanners are very different, so you may be unlucky. Now when you get to the location, this is where the magic happens. In all my years of being an incredibly mediocre photographer and content creator, I've made a lot of mistakes. But one thing in particular has stood out to me when I'm traveling. Usually when we're traveling, we just go out throughout the day with our family or with our partner or whoever, and we're just shooting throughout the day. And unfortunately, this is usually in harsh daylight. There's loads of other tourists about. 
and you kind of just end up getting the same pictures as everyone else. This is kind of where you've got to flip the script and get your hungover ass up at 6 a.m. Get out there while the light is hitting just right and no one else is on the streets. Get it up really early just before sunrise and shoot in whatever location you're in will provide you with that soft, warm light. And as I said, no one else is up. It's really safe usually because most of the bad shit happens in the evening, not in the morning, and you get a really unique perspective. Of course, if you want to, you could also shoot in the evening when the light is better as well, but there's usually more people around, could be a little bit more dangerous, and I don't know, the morning, there's just a special kind of feeling to it. You end up having a much longer day in a way, and it's a good thing to do. This final step is hard, but when it pays off, it really pays off. If you're anything like the way I used to shoot, then you shoot what you see. There's an old tower there, I may as well shoot that. There's some petrified remains of a man wiping his arse on the side of Pompeii. I may as well shoot that. It's all the same shit that everyone's already seen. The truth is, no one cares about that shit because they've seen it all before. It's far too easy to fall into this sort of habitual, mindless way of shooting. Instead of shooting just what's there, what everyone sees when they go to these places, try to encapsulate the feeling of this particular place. And there's no rules against shooting tourist attractions, but if you do shoot tourist attractions, try to frame them or try to capture them in a completely new way. When I talk about capturing the feeling, I mean the hustle and bustle, the food, the people, the lifestyle, and how people get along day to day in that particular place. If you only do one thing from this video, then I think it should be this tip. Because if you just shoot the same shit in the same way, in the same kind of light that everyone else does, there's absolutely nothing that sets your pictures apart whatsoever. And I'm not saying that you're a bad photographer because of this, because every single one of us has done this at some point. Think of a little bit more about telling stories with your photos and shooting in a more creative way in these places, because you're only gonna be there for a short period of time. And if you come away with the same old photos, you may as well not have taken them. I hope this one was helpful. And before I leave you, I'm going to suggest a song because I love doing that. Today's song is Seasons by Future Islands and I'm suggesting it because it's a banger and you should listen to it if you haven't already. If you enjoyed this video, then you're definitely going to want to take a look at the next one because I make really good videos. Maybe. Maybe not, but you might like them.